Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. What is terror? It's really only a word, unless you've experienced it. And once you've experienced it, there's no word for it. It defies description. There are all forms of terror. Extreme fear of physical injury, for one. Paralyzing fear of insupportable pain, physical or mental. Mental. This, I'm told, can be the most horrifying form of terror of them all. Our mystery drama, A Small Question of Terror, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Terry Keene. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Sit around. As I said at the outset, terror can take many forms, disguises. Consider the case of Alexis Mead, a young woman, intelligent, attractive, occupation, sales clerk, engaged to be married, lives with her widowed mother, Emily, whom she supports. The place? An apartment in, uh, well, a city. A city in, uh, well, a country. Time? Could be today. Could be tomorrow. Not important. What's important is, it happened. And... It could happen again. But, Mother, what does the Bureau of Human Affairs want with me? What could this... What's his name? Where's the letter? Oh, here it is. Gilbert Stainer. What could he possibly want with me? Well, now, if you ask me, Alexis, if you ask me, it's probably nothing at all. Some little unimportant matter about... Oh, I don't know. Nothing to get upset about, dear. A lot about... Mother, this is from the Bureau of Human Affairs, which is just a cover for the secret police. And this man Stainer is titled here under the signature. He's director of interrogation. In heaven's name, what could he want to interrogate me about? Well, I can't imagine. I really can't. Unless you did something you shouldn't have done. Did you, Alexis? Like, oh, I don't know, complain to someone, maybe at the office, that we haven't enough to eat? That the protector, our glorious protector, has called for austerity measures? Mother, and, please, and, and, please, please, stop running on. Oh, I'm sorry, dear, I, I, I do talk too much, I, I know. Mother, you didn't complain about something, anything, did you? Me? Complain? Say anything that somebody might... Might have reported. Oh, no, really, Alexis. Oh, I do talk too much. I do, I know. But, my dear, you know better than to ask me that. Well, you know better than to even think. I'd be foolish enough to say anything critical of our protector or, or the government or, or anything. Mother, sorry, dear. The letter gives no reason why this Mr. Sturmer wants to see you. Daner. No. It just says I'm to appear at his office Monday at 3 p.m. Well, you'll find out then what it is he wants when you get there. That's four days from now, Mother. I've got to wait and worry for four solid days to say nothing of nights. Worry? Oh, my dear, I certainly wouldn't worry. Mother, some people who have gone into the Human Affairs Building, in fact, a good many people, have never been seen or heard of again. Oh, I've heard that. Well, you can believe it. Oh, I'll get it. Hello? Eric, honey. Oh, Eric. How are you, darling? Oh, I'm not sure. I just got home and found a letter waiting for me from the Bureau of Human Affairs. You too? What? You? Yes. I'm ordered to appear at 3 o'clock next Monday. I've been told to be there at 2. Who, who signed your letter? Oh, somebody named Stainer. Gilbert Stainer. What do you suppose this is all about? I wish I knew... I wish I knew now instead of having to wait until Monday. Yeah, me too. It kind of worries me, Alexis. It scares me, Eric. It scares me half to death. Yes? Um, my name is Alexis Mead, and I... Oh, yes. You're here to see Mr. Stainer at 3 o'clock. Yes. You're early... Oh, I, I was afraid of being late. Afraid? What would you be afraid of, Miss Mead? 
Well, I didn't mean afraid, except... But that's what you said. There's nothing to be afraid of, Miss Mead, if you have nothing to fear. I haven't. Well, then. Eric! Uh, Alexis. What did he want? Stainer, what did he ask you? You're next, Miss Mead. Uh, I'll see you later, Alexis. Come to dinner tonight? Okay. Miss Mead is here, Mr. Stainer. Thank you, Miss Peters. Do come in, Miss Mead. Thank you. And sit down, please. Uh, that chair in front of my desk. Well, now, Miss Mead, first let me say I'm sorry if you've been put to any inconvenience. Oh, no. No. But you did have to take off from your job early. I'm told you lose two hours' pay. Who told you? It's so, isn't it? Oh, well, yes, but The who... Bureau will see that you're reimbursed for any loss of pay you incurred today, or may incur in the future. The future? I'll be coming here again? That'll depend entirely on you. Now, how is your mother? My mother is fine, thank you, fine. That arthritis flare-up she suffered last week, that's over with? Yes. Delighted to hear it. A cup of coffee? No, thank you, Mr. Stanner. I'd like to know why... Cigarette? Thank you, I don't smoke. Oh, that's right. You gave up cigarettes several months ago. Too expensive. What with the tax, the surtax and all, I believe you said. I don't recall saying anything like that. No? No. But that is why you quit. Uh, Yes, Mr. Stainer, you certainly didn't ask me here to discuss my reasons for giving up smoking. No, goodness me, no. Then why am I here? It could be that I just like to talk and look at pretty women. I beg your pardon? The joke, a little joke. Although you are extremely attractive, you know. Thank you. Well, now, I asked you to come here today because, um... Because? I thought there might be something you cared to tell me. Something I cared to tell you? Something you might care to tell me. Such as? I don't know. Well, if you don't know, I'm sure I don't. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, what could I know? If you could give me some idea, some idea of what it is you're after, I'm not after anything, Miss Mead. The way you put it, what is it you're after... You make it sound as if I'm pursuing you, trying to hound you. No, I didn't mean it that way. No, no, of course you didn't. Well? Well? Is there something you might care to tell the Bureau? Tell me. I can't think of anything, Mr. Stainer. You sure? I'm positive. Perhaps if you gave it some thought. What thought? How can I think about something when I don't know what to think about? It will come to you. Think about it long enough and it'll come. It might be in the morning when you're at work or or during mealtime or in the middle of the night in bed. You suddenly say to yourself, that's it. That's what I had to tell the Bureau. Mr. Stainer, I'm sorry, but I can't imagine... You'll see, you'll see. Now, you just go away and think about it a while and you'll see... Uh, let me escort you to the door. Mr. Stainer, please, I assure you, believe me, there is nothing I know of can think of. Your hand, Mr. Stainer. No. Sorry. Your coat. I was only admiring the cloth. I like the, uh, feel of cloth like this. So soft. So pleasurable to the touch. Soft as a woman's skin. Good day, Mr. Stainer. Good day, Miss Mead. Do some thinking now. See what you can come up with before our next meeting. Before our next meeting. The last thing he said just as I left. Oh, stop worrying and eat your dinner, Alexis. What there is of it. And you, Eric... Those were his last words to me, too. That means he's going to call us in again. Obviously. Have my meat, Alexis. Mother, no. No. You finish the meat. I don't want any more. You don't want any more because you think I haven't had enough. Well, you haven't. None of us has. None of us ever does. Everything's in short supply. Oh, and the prices. I was saying to Maggie Norton only the other day. I met her in the supermarket. You know, we hadn't seen each other in months. You didn't say anything to Maggie. 
Anything that might be misconstrued. What? Anything she could have reported to the Bureau of Human Affairs. Now, what do you take me for, Alexis? I'm only trying to find out, searching for whatever it is Stainer knows. But didn't he say he doesn't know? Mother, he knows. Eric and I wouldn't have been ordered to appear if he didn't know. He's just playing cat and mouse. That's what he's doing. He's trying to get me, get us to confess to something. Well, confess to what? I'm telling you, I'm so on edge even now, even after just one meeting with him. I'd tell him what he wants to know, if I knew what it is. Eric, are you sure you don't? Don't know? Yes. I don't get you, Alexis. Is there... Could it be that you maybe said something sometime to someone that might have been better left unsaid? You think I'm some kind of nut? Of course not, but... But what? Don't be so touchy, Eric. You could have said something. I could. Mother could. Not a word. Not a word. I'm no fool, Alexis. Not me. You just don't know who you can trust anymore. Uh, I guess there wouldn't be any more coffee, Mrs. Mead, would there? Maybe a few drops, Eric. Give me your cup. Hmm. Well, something has been said, and if we're smart... Here you are, Eric. We'll find out what it was. Because one thing is sure. What happened with Mr. Gilbert Stainer today is only the beginning. Hmm. I think I know what you mean. You know what I mean. What do you mean? Nothing, Mother. Oh, Mother, Mother, please, please. Now, don't don't stop crying. That's what you mean. Even me be dead. Oh, why is it got so you're afraid to say have a good day to someone or keep well or anything? Well, I said to Maggie Norton, we hadn't seen each other in months, and we were talking about the scarcities and the high prices, and she said not to worry because the protector would take care of things eventually. And I said, I could have bit my tongue. I said, you, you know, joking. I said, someday, he'll protect us to death. <laughs> and Eric, you dropped your cup. Uh, I'm sorry. Mother, you didn't say that to Maggie Norton. Oh, I could have bit my tongue. But I told you. You said it to me once, and I told you then to never say it again. Eric, what is it? It's nothing. I, I... Why did you drop the cup? Was it what Mother just said? No, no, honestly. It, is it, that it, what Stainer is after? Is it? Well, how do I know what Stainer is after? You do know. What Mother said about the protector protecting us to death. Is that it? Eric, for heaven's sake, tell me. I can't stand not knowing. I can't stand it. <laughs> Like a stain is already spreading through Alexis Mead. To know the truth will be bad, but not knowing is even worse. As Gilbert Stainer is well aware, a human being can face what he knows, but fear of the unknown is the most corrosive destroyer of the human spirit yet discovered. I'll return shortly with Act Two. Here is an important man. A small question. A simple, seemingly innocent question. Is there anything you'd care to tell me? A small, simple question? Yes. But one fraught with terror for those who are asked by Gilbert Stainer of the Bureau of Human Affairs. For Alexis Mead, of whom he has asked it. In the apartment she shares with her mother, Alexis faces her fiancé, Eric, and cries. Eric, you know. You do know. For heaven's sake, tell me. I can't stand not knowing. All right. I'll tell you. I didn't want to. I was afraid it would make things worse for you. Eric, tell me. This afternoon, Steiner asked me if I had ever heard anyone make that remark about the protector. Well, of course, I lied. I said no. You had heard it. Where? Who said it? Well, honey, you did. I... Don't you remember? We were sitting in the park, and, and you said... Well, I don't remember the exact words, but something like... Mother said the funniest thing today. Could be a dangerous thing if she ever repeated it. And I warned her not to, but... You just had to tell me, you said. And you told me. You don't remember? Yes. I'd forgotten about it. It didn't seem important then. 
There was no one around. No one could have overheard. Was there? I don't remember. You know, we had a little laugh over it, and and then I guess we both forgot it. And he did ask you, Stainer. If I'd ever heard that remark made by someone. And like I said, I said no. Well, is it, is it such a terrible thing to say? I said it as a joke. You said it as a joke. Mother, the trouble is the world we live in is no joke. I meant nothing. You meant nothing when you said what you said about protecting us to death. But they can take a thing like that and build it and build it. Alexis. I'm sorry. So that's what he's after. He wanted me, wants me, to say... Perhaps you mean a remark my mother once made about the protector protecting us to death. Would they torture me then? Kill me? They'll never torture your mother because they're never going to find out. Eric didn't tell Stainer where he'd heard it. And I'll certainly never tell him. Under torture? Not under the worst torture they can think of. Eric? Don't worry, Mrs. Mead. They'll get nothing out of me. I promise you that. Oh, thank you, Eric. Thank you. I'll make a little more coffee. Not much. But we can have a little. Eric? Yes? Keep that promise. My mother, she's old and she's sick. And I love her. Keep your promise, Eric. <laughs> Well, don't stand there staring at me as if you'd seen a ghost, Miss Mead. Sit down. Is there something wrong? I, uh, I was asked to come and see Mr. Stainer again. I didn't expect to find you behind his desk, Miss... Or is it Mrs... Uh, Miss Peters. Miss Peters. Uh, Mr. Stainer was called away unexpectedly. I'm taking over for him temporarily. I am his assistant, you know. I didn't know. Yes. And perhaps it's just as well his being needed elsewhere at the moment. He himself thought, he mentioned, that you might speak more openly to me. You know, woman to woman. Miss Peters, let's get something straight. I didn't know then and I don't know now what it is he wanted me to tell him. But of course you do. I do not. (laughs) What was that? What was what? That scream. Scream? You heard a scream. You know I heard a scream. It came from the torture chambers in the cellar. Now, don't tell me you believe the stories you've heard, Miss Mead. You know about the hideous tortures that go on in this place. Oh, we are not in the habit of torturing people here. Now, don't look so frightened, my dear. Why, my goodness, the color has drained out of your face. Here, let me... Ow! What are you doing? My dear, I'm sorry. Did I hurt you? I only pinched your cheeks. Just a little to bring the color back. Oh, I am sorry if I hurt you. I didn't really, did I? No. Well, I'm glad to hear that. My good heavens, I wouldn't hurt you for the world, my dear. None of us would. Gilbert Stainer, there isn't a gentler, more sympathetic man on this earth. Any woman will tell you that. Any woman who gets to know him, that is. Yes. Yes, I'm sure. You'll see when you get to know him better. But he is a man, you know. By that I mean he can be, well, brutal, too. He has that other side to him. A side that shows when he, well, you might say, loses patience. Take a tip from me, Alexis. Don't make Gilbert lose his patience. Thank you for the advice. What is it now, Alexis? You know what it is. That scream. You're letting your imagination run away with you. Now, don't you start imagining things like frightful tortures and slow deaths. All you have to do, my dear, is tell us if there's anything you would care to tell us. If you would tell me what it is you want to know. But how could we know what it is you'd care to tell us? Oh, this is impossible. This is just plain simply impossible. Now, now you're tired, my dear. And those screams you thought you heard are still bothering you. I tell you what. You go home and think things over. 
I don't have to. But you do. Gilbert and I have been through this many times before, Alexis. Believe me, we have. And always, people come back and say, is this what you wanted to know? And it always is. You'll remember. I know you will. You'll remember. Are you home? Eric! What took you so long? I was asleep. Asleep for three days and nights? I've telephoned you again and again. You haven't come to see me? Eric, what's happened? Well, nothing, nothing. I've, I've, I've been very busy, uh, tied up. Is well, that why you're limping? Well, I, I, I hurt my back. You did? Or they did? They? You know who I mean. He had you tortured, didn't he? Stainer. What gave you that idea? The way you're limping and your jaw still swollen. Eric. They tortured me. Oh. Yes. Oh, my darling, my poor Don't, darling. Alexis, don't. What? Don't touch me. Don't even come near me. I... Uh, oh, my God. Eric, darling, what? I, I told them. I told them. I couldn't help myself. The pain. Impossible not to tell. Not to scream it out as loud as I could. What? What did you tell them? You know. Tell me anyhow. I must be sure. I told them, yes, I'd heard someone make that remark. Our protector will protect us to death. And then I told them, I told them, Alexis, forgive me. Forgive me. I told them. It was you. It's all right. <laughs> it's going to be all right. The first thing we must do is keep our heads, not panic. But you don't understand. I'm in no danger. You are. I saved my own neck by sacrificing you. Don't you realize you're in as much danger as I? How can I be? You are involved now. You're an accessory to the crime. Crime? What crime? A harmless remark? Eric, don't you understand? It's what the stainers of this world feed on, turning the innocent into the guilty. It's their business. It's what they live for. But what can we do? The first thing I must do is protect Mother. Or did you tell them that, too? That Mother was the first to... No, I... no, I... All right, then, then at least she's safe. Yeah. But they'll question me again now, and torture is more than likely. Oh, what I've let you in for. I could kill myself. None of that now. We've got to keep our heads. Think... Let me see. Uh, Luke. Luke Stevens. Luke Stevens. What about him? That place of his in the mountains. It's not too far from the border. What are you talking about, the border? We've got to escape, leave the country. There's no other way. Now, if we could get to Luke's place, we could hide there for a few days, then slip over the border. Well, that's impossible. I'm being watched now. You're being watched. We must be. I'm sure of it, but we've got to try. We can't be any worse off than we are now, so listen to me. Yes. I'm going to go home. I will get Mother. In an hour, let's say an hour, you go down, get in your car, and drive to that favorite spot of ours in the park. Mother and I will meet you there, and then we'll get in your car and head for Luke's place in the mountains. But if we're being watched... We'll have to take the only chance we've got. Try to give them the slip. Not much chance of that. No. But it is the only chance we've got. I don't understand, Alexis. Why suddenly do you want to go for a walk in the park? I don't feel like going for a walk. Mother, please don't argue. I want to go for a walk and I want you to come with me. Well, you're acting very strangely, Alexis. And here, what are you stuffing in your handbag? Mother, please. Two never brushes? Ma- Half a candy bar? The candy we've been saving for a special treat. Alexis, what is this? I will tell you later. You tell me now. Or I will not step one foot out of this apartment. Mother, please trust me. Oh, my goodness, it seems we have visitors. Yes, I'm afraid we do. Yes? Are you Alexis Mead? Yes. Uh, Is that your mother there? Yes. Both of you to come with me, please. Where? And why are we to come with you? I can't answer that. You don't have to. 
I know where. And why. Alexis Meade fights the terror that tries to surge through her as she and her mother go with the agent from the secret police. To what? Torture? Death? We'll find out when I return shortly with Act Three. Innocent remark has brought Alexis Mead, her mother, and her fiancé Eric to the brink of torture and possible death. Eric, breaking under the torture's exquisite pain, revealed he'd heard the remark from Alexis. But Alexis has not yet divulged that her mother, Emily, first made the remark to her. Not yet. Now as all three sit and wait in a small room at the Bureau of Human Affairs, a fourth presence waits with them, an invisible but palpable presence whose name is Terror. Two hours. They've kept us waiting two hours. Why? Why? For the same reason they picked you up and brought you here with Mother and me, so we could break each other down with our personal fears and tensions. Alexis, I want you to be honest with me. All this it's because of that remark, that silly, joking remark I made. No. I'm sure it is. What else could it be? I don't know what remark you're talking about, Mother. You never made any remarks. But of course me, I, I know of it. The one about the problem. Oh, it's so into me. I am trying to silence you, Mother. But I might have known that's impossible. Room could be bugged. Bugs? Bugs? Hidden microphones, Mother. Now, please, please don't say another word. You. Come with me. Me? Where are you taking her? Come along. But, but, but I... No. I, 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 wait a minute, please. My mother is old. She's old and she's sick. Wait, please wait. <laughs> Eric. Oh, God, what are they going to do to her? I, I don't like to think. I can't stand it. Not to know what they're going to do to her. They're doing this to break me down. They know what my mother means to me. They're using fear, my fear, of what they may do to her to break me. Well, you can't be sure of that. You, this way. Well, what for? Just come along, please. They're going to torture me again. I won't be able to stand it. Alexis. Come along now. Alexis. Alexis. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Yes. Yes, God. Oh, I go on my knees and I beg you to help me. I've never asked help of you in the past, but I need you now. Be with me, I beg you. If there's a way out, a way to escape, show it to me. Not for my sake, but theirs, mothers and Eric's. I'm not begging for myself, but for them, because I love them. Why, Miss Mead, what on earth are you doing on your knees? I'm praying, Miss Peters. Oh, come now. You don't really believe in God, do you? I don't know. Come along. Gilbert, uh, Mr. Stainer is ready to see you now. I've told him all I know. Which was that you knew nothing. A lie, of course, but never mind. He has something to tell you. What? Come along, my dear. Find out for yourself. <laughs> Sit down, Miss Mead. Alexis, if I may, sit down. No, no, don't leave us, Miss Peters. Alexis won't mind if you stay, I'm sure. We're all friends by this time. Though you certainly don't look very friendly, Alexis. Mr. Stainer. Gilbert, please. I do want to be your friend, Alexis. I've wanted to be from the first. And I must say that I'm puzzled by your attitude. You have nothing to gain by being unfriendly toward me. And much to gain by being... Otherwise, and Miss Peters will tell you that. It's true, Alexis. I know that once Alexis realizes I want to be her friend, she'll be amenable to my wishes. You will now, won't you, Alexis? That depends, Mr. Stainer. Uh, Gilbert? Mr. Stainer, that depends on your wishes. My only wish at the moment 
is for you to tell me the truth. About what? When I first asked you here, I made clear to you that I simply wanted you to tell me anything you thought the Bureau ought to know. And I made it clear to you that I knew of nothing, could think of nothing. But of course you know now that you were wrong. I know nothing of the sort. Very well, Alexis. Uh, Miss Mead, I'll be plain with you. I first asked, ordered you to come and see me because I'd learned of a remark that had been made. A treasonous remark. When I asked you to tell me about it, you denied all knowledge of it. You never asked me about a treasonous remark. You asked me if there was anything I cared to tell you. Certainly a treasonous remark, a remark punishable by death, my dear. Slow death, as you know, would be something you cared to tell. If I'd known about the remark, I didn't, and I don't. Curious. After all, you made it. I? I made it? Your fiancé, Eric, didn't tell you when you visited him late this afternoon? I can have him brought here to this office in minutes. He didn't tell you? He said something about... My having said something about our protector. And what did you say about our protector? It was said jokingly. I meant nothing by it. Perhaps, but what did you say? I said, if things kept on, our protector would protect us to death. Well, at last, at last, Peter, she has admitted it. Well, of course, we knew she would, Gilbert. You never fail. You always have a way with women. Thank you. So then, Miss Mead, you admit you said this to your fiancé. Yes. Knowing that treason is punishable by death. I told you it was said as a joke. A joke. Unfortunately, I fail to see the joke. If there is something funny in the thought that our protector will protect us to death. No, I simply don't see it. Perhaps you'd explain it, Miss Mead. If it has to be explained. Yes. Jokes can't be explained. I've admitted I said it. What more do you want? What more? If I'm guilty of treason, I'm guilty of treason. Then torture me, kill me. But let my mother and Eric go. Happily, if it's possible. If it's at all possible, after you tell me who first made the remark to you. Who? No one. There was someone. There was no one. We know there was someone. Who was it? If you know, why do you ask me? Oh, first we're unfriendly, now we're arrogant. I'm not being arrogant. You are what I say you are. Now let me tell you something, my independent, arrogant little wench. I... <laughs> and you will be my wench before I'm through with you. Now you can make it easy on yourself or hard. Which shall it be? The easy way is to admit to me here and now who made the remark to you. That way, I shall simply hand you over to Miss Peters. Well, the easy way, the hard way, which? The easy way. You're being wise. Now, who said to you, our protector will protect us to death? Well, who... You want me to tell you in front of Miss Peters? What? You don't, do you? Why shouldn't you? Oh, I guess I said the wrong thing. What wrong thing? What are you saying? I... Oh, Gilbert. Gilbert, darling, I can't tell you with her here. What the devil is she saying? What the devil is she saying? Gilbert? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. What, Miss Mead? I... I can't tell you that. Gilbert, please ask her to leave. Ask her to... Oh, I see. I see a little game. You're trying some little game. You're trying to suggest in front of Miss Peters. Trying to suggest that, that somehow, in some way, there's... There's something between us. Between you and me. No, no. There, there's a... There's nothing between you and me. Nothing. One moment. If there is nothing, there's nothing. There is nothing. Now, don't look at me like that, Peters. There is nothing. Now, you little... 
You... You answer me. In front of Peters, answer me. Who said it to you first? Who? All right, Gilbert. I see you trust Miss Peters, though I certainly wouldn't. Not if she was my assistant. I mean, not with all the suspicion, the mistrust, the doubt we all live with these days. Why, she could have your job ten minutes after you were executed. She'd snap it up, too. You know that. For the last time, who told you? Well, if you insist. You did, of course. I? I? Gilbert, have you forgotten that night? Oh, that first night together, that gloriously rapturous night. What in the name of... Of course, I know you were, uh... Well, you weren't drunk, but you know, you talked a little too much, maybe. Said some things you'd not have said if... No. No, she's lying, Peters. I I, I swear she's lying. If you say so, I suppose she is, but... But but, but what? It's well known, Gilbert. Mr. Stainer, that you have a way with women. (laughs) Not this woman. Not this little conniving trollop. Believe me, Peters. Now, now, believe me. I believe you, Mr. Stainer. And I'm sure our protector will, too. What do you mean, our protector will? He'll believe that everything I say in my letter is a lie. Nothing but a lie. Say what in your letter? What letter? Gilbert, darling, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But we do live in an age of terrible mistrust and suspicion, and, uh, well, a girl has to protect herself, and so I wrote a letter to our protector telling him all about us. There is nothing to tell about us. If you said there was, you lied. You lied! No, darling, but let's hope he thinks so. Well, when... When did you send this letter... Oh, I I didn't. You... You didn't send it? Gilbert, of course not. Would I want any harm to come to you after what we've been to each other? Weeks of torture? Slow death? Would I want that for you? Where... where is this letter? I have it. Uh, I mean, a friend of mine has it. What friend? Gilbert, if I told you that... Oh, of course I can't. But you needn't worry about it. My friend won't send it unless... Well, unless something happens to me. Unless... <laughs> a shrewd little wench, Peters. A very shrewd little wench. There was, there is nothing between us. And there is no letter, I'm sure of that. Are you, Mr. Stainer? Of course. Of course. Still, well, there... Well, this has all been... It, it's crossed my mind more than once. A, a tempest in the teapot mountains out of molehills. The remark that was made, we... We've taken it too seriously. We? Well, you. Well, why, then? Well, no harm done. None. You may go, Miss Mead. And my mother... And my fiancé? They can go, too. Thank you. Thank you very much. But I want a safe conduct out of the country. A safe conduct? For all three of us. My mother, my fiancé, and myself. I have it. I'll see it's arranged. Good day. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, and to you, Miss Peters... I think I said to you a little earlier, I think I said I didn't know whether I believed in God or not. Yes. I believe in him now, Miss Peters. I believe in him now. I don't recall Alexis writing a letter, do you? Could have, though. Not important. I mean whether there was a letter or wasn't. What strikes me as important is that she called on God for help, only in extremity. Seems to me we all of us make that same mistake. Sure, call on him when you need help, but call on him when you don't need anything. Just call. 
Doors always open, 24 hours a day. I'll be back shortly. You're driving a car you knew you were going to buy the minute you saw it. Skyhawk. Buick Skyhawk. You just knew a car this streamlined would be easy on gas, and you were right. In published EPA mileage test results, Skyhawk got 25 miles per gallon on the open road and 16 in the city. Skyhawk. It's rakish, it's low slung, it looks European, but it's a Buick. Living free. Terry Keith.